Well, today, by way of change, um, what I've been asked to do, I've had a look at all sorts of stuff. I've got so much to put onto um, YouTube over the years. But I'm going to talk about the killing house. And of course, these days, I think we have to call it the kill house. I don't know. Snow <laughs> Snowflake involvement. No idea. But either or, I want to talk you through the first part of that as an interest. And we will be going back to other stuff. But yeah, why not? It's um, part of my um, upbringing in the SAS. So before I do that, um, I'd just like to promote my book, Go, Go, Go. Jamie Bell on the front, the British actor who plays me in the film Six Days which is out on Netflix. That's Jamie Bell. The book is the inspiration for the film. And the book is my book. So just take a look there on my website. This book, The Regiment, 15 Years in the SAS, speaks for itself. That's me in the middle. And of course, that's on my website as well. So that's from when I was born all the way through to 1992 when I left the SAS. I'll give you the website address in a minute. Behind me is the print. And the print is called The Resolution. Again, on my website, all for sale. Doing very well. I think there's still seven of them left. So anybody wants one, dig in. And of course, I sign and send them from home. With the other two books, this one, Audible. Yes, it's out now on Audible. Has been for a couple of months. This one, Audible being fixed as we speak and should be out in the not too distant future. So Audible and normal books, the print uh, behind. That's me in the middle with no gloves. And then, of course, you've got the mink and a few of the other the guys um, on there and they're for sale as well i sign and send them from home all you have to do is go on the website and order it's as simple as that really anyway let's go back to my youtube channel which is doing extremely well nearly eleven thousand on at the last count today which is remarkable for a short period of time so it's um the YouTube channel is Rusty Fermin SAS TV. Pass that on to your mates. Get them to have a look at it. Spoke to um, some cadets yesterday. Last night I did an hour and a quarter, I think it was. Questions and answers and stuff. Had a good time. Hopefully they learned an awful lot and had a great uh, response back today. Saying thank you very much and everything else. That means an awful lot. But that was done last night. And a lot of them are watching my YouTube channel and subscribing to it. Subscribe, it's free. Okay. So you don't need to worry about anything to do with payments and stuff. It is free. So get on there and have a look and keep yourself up to date with what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do, and where I'm going, and get a feel for it. So it's there. Okay, let's get over to the killing house. In my day, I'm talking about 40 years ago. In my day, it was the killing house. Nowadays, I've been told, you're not allowed to say that. You have to say kill house. Not quite sure what the difference is. But either way, it's got nothing to do with killing people. What it has to do with is a name that was given all those years ago to somewhere where we could go and train on our own, in black kit mainly, and have a shoot. So why not? Um, so there is no, as far as I'm aware, reason why it was called that. But you know what the lads are like. They'll come up with a good name and it sticks. So I don't talk about operations and I don't talk about anything that's happening today. You have to remember what I talk about is my experiences and, of course, what I got up to and 
keeping you guys informed because it's all been misinterpreted over the years. If you get it from me and it's misinterpreted, it'd be an accident. But if you get it from the waltz, then I'm, I'm destroying waltz every single day. Um, you know, it's a shame, but that's their little life. Let them get on with it. Instead of the killing house for them, it'll be the doll's house, okay? So <laughs> let's get that one straight. They'll go into the doll's house, we'll go into the killing house and forget them. So that's the way it starts off. Where was it situated? Well, it was situated in Hereford, in the old Bradbury and Stirling lines, all those years ago. Um, and it was right next to the railway track that comes round the back of Hereford, leading you into Hereford from Newport. Right out on this far side of the camp, a good place for it to be. Um, and that's where it was situated. Nowadays, that's all flattened. There is no camp there anymore. And it's now a housing estate. When we're making six days, I took um, the scriptwriter there to show him what it used to be, to give him some sort of feel um, for the area, for the, for the lads who worked there, um, who served in the unit. So part of it was where the killing house was, because as you know, on the film Six Days on Netflix, there's a fair bit of it goes on in the killing house. So that's where we are. But it's a building, it's, um, it's a house and estate these days. Walking there in civilian kit and within a few minutes, it's like going into the phone box, the Superman, you come out, with your black kit on. That includes everything, your belt kit, the whole lot, for what you're going to train in. All your personal kit is left there. All your weapons and ammunition. Your weapons are with you. Your ammunition is in one corner of that place. And that's where it stays for the duration. You want to load up your ammunition and stuff. That's where you do it, in the corner. So there are all these people doing that. So the lads are doing it um, and they just get on. You know, that is their room. From there, when you go through that room into the next room, the shooting room right across from that is actually what I would call where you go to warm up um, the basic room, if you like. Targets in there, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you go in there and you can do your static shooting, single shot, double shot, double tap as you call it. You could fire MP5, single and automatic in there. But the caliber of the killing house was never more or designed for more than nine millimeter. Just remember that because people say, oh, but what about this? That? No, nine millimeter was what it was designed for. And that takes care of the Browning high power pistol. It also takes care of the MP5 because that's what they are. And isn't that a brilliant picture behind me? Huh, absolutely amazing. Anyway, so that's where we are with that. Um, just to give you a feel. In there, you could probably shoot about six to eight guys side by side. But all the rooms have a capability which is unique and was unique that you could fire 360 degrees, not just walk onto a range and fire down the range, safety this, safety that. No, these you could fire with other men in the room at 360 degrees. Some people, oh, isn't that dangerous? It's dangerous if you're a Walt and it's also dangerous if you don't adhere to the rules. The guys are fully trained, they're well trained, they're well prepared. They've got the best ammo in the world. They've got the best weapons in the world. So let's not get too carried away. We were fully, highly trained, highly motivated individuals that worked in a team. So you have to put your trust in each other. And you do that six months in and out on almost a daily basis, shooting like that. You're pretty good. And you're probably absolutely brilliant at the end of it. You know, so 
that sort of cycle came round every six months and every two years because you'd be changing over squadrons. Mine, I always talk about B squadron. I call it Big B because I would do because it's my squadron. That's what I was in. So that would be the first room. Okay. What were the makeup of the rooms? Well, that one would have been, um, it's an oblong room. And of course, as I say, you could get six to eight guys in there with a meter or two apart, social distancing, if you like. Um, and of course, the rooms, if you think about it, were gravel floor. And then extractor fans in the room, because when you're firing that amount of stuff, the lead in the air needs to be extracted out so it doesn't do you damage. And of course, a lot of the time we were shooting in respirators, but we'll come on to that later. Just trying to give you a feel for the basic room, if you like. The targets in those days were figure 11 targets. Everybody that's been in the military know what they are. In the main, figure 12 Cs as well. And of course, the bad guys were Carlos Jackal targets. It's all documented in different places. I'm just giving you the insight now, so you can say Rusty said. Carlos Jackal, as everybody knows, with the dark glasses on the stuff, he was the bad guy. So he was the bad guy's target. With that, you can have a mixture of hostages, male, female, carrying babies, and so on and so on. So you could do different scenarios in the end. But this was the basic room. Okay? Some of the demonstrations took place in there. And we'll talk about them in a different um a, a different <laughs> a different program. So that that will come later on. So once you've got the gravel floor, it's great. Okay, you do your shooting. Your targets are up. Where do the bullets go? Well, people have always asked that. Well, once you fire, they go through the target. Ricochet, that's the worst case scenario, apart from being shot. To cut that out, behind all the targets, all the way around the room, is a thick foam, like the ones they used to use in gymnasiums on the floor. Okay, so you fire, the bullet goes through the target, if you hit the target and then it goes through the rubber foam and hits a splash wall at the back made of metal and stuff but the bullets didn't come back out because they hit the back of the rubber foam and dropped to the ground which made it safe nobody wants to work in an unsafe environment it's okay it cuts down the risk of injury and that's how it works. If you think about it, great. So you could go there firing single shot, double shot, um, automatic. And I don't know anybody that was ever hit by a splashback off the wall. Nobody. Which is remarkable. I've been fired thousands and thousands of rounds myself over the years. But anybody who happened to be in there monitoring it to see how you doing they can play the video back to you to show you how crap you were or they can play it back to show you how well you did however or to help you improve the next time you go in there because anybody can go and just shoot bullets but actually we're looking to improve every time on everything we did and that was no different don't listen to what you're told. You won't be there too long, I can tell you that. First of all, I enjoyed it. Secondly, I treated it with respect, live ammunition only. No blank. Live. That makes a difference here. You know, you can seriously damage somebody's health if you get it wrong. And that's not what we're about. So... That second room was quite important and it's nice to have a look and see, oh, okay, yeah, I've got that. 
yeah, could do that one better. Yeah, should have did that. You know, should have done that. Yeah. And it's constant. People don't realize that it's constant appraisal of trying to do better. And the two words I always use, adaptability and flexibility. You don't know what's inside that door until you go through it. Then you have to deal with it. Okay, that's the difference. It's never the same scenario one after another. Otherwise, what's the point? You might as well stand outside and say, I'll go, in there and I'll go right and shoot. We'll talk about where we go later. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the killing house itself. So we had this, we had the, where you get changed in the changing room. We've gone into the first room, which is like a basic room, really, but where you can do static stuff. We've gone into the, the third room, and it's hard to say without having a map, but I don't have one at the moment, but it, we will come on to that. And then the, the one where you get monitored on the video, and that's very important. Then you come out of that room, then go down a bit further. You can then go into another room, which is bigger than the one we've just been in with the video stuff. And that can be converted into all sorts of scenarios with furniture, barricades. Um, and you make life difficult for the, for the guys like us who are going in singly, double or four of you in the main. That, that's the way we trained. So that was great. <clears throat> so the once you start barricading stuff and making life far more difficult, for example, putting the hostage targets right behind maybe a terrorist holding them or the other way around or whatever, you've then got to really start to um, fire and maneuver and get around. As I say, things have changed this day and age and I'm not going to even mention it. Then lastly, you come out of that one to the fifth room, if you like, um, and you can have as many rooms as you want. But mine, in my day, and I keep saying my day because I want you to remember, we're the ones who started this. And of course, the last room on the left was kitted out like the fuselage body of a jet. Okay, so you've got seats on each side with an aisle down the middle. Um, you could put live people in there, sitting down in the chairs. And we've done it. Whilst you go in and attack to save a would-be hostage, hostages, multiple hostages. And you can use live bodies, but don't forget they're live firing. So now <laughs> you're really at the top of your game. You can't afford a mistake. But you're not shooting really into the chairs where the guys are sat, even though you're going in and clearing. At the very end, in front of you, down in the distance, I don't know how many people remember the targets that when you fire, the bullet hits it and it stops. And you can point where your bullet went in. Did you hit the terrorist? Or if you made a mistake and hit somebody else. You can't escape that. That is there being recorded for you. So you can replay that back to yourself. Not to yourself, but to the guys who've just gone in there. Um, if there's any bullet holes in the hostages, you can spank yourselves. If you've done a good job and taken out the terrorists. And of course, remember, there's live bodies can be in the seats and the fuselage on the way down. If they all get up and walk out, you know, that's quite, that's the name of the game. So hopefully, just for now, um, I've given you the first part of the insight. And of course, I'll come on to it either tomorrow or the following day. We'll follow up on this with the actual shooting techniques. It's a shame I can't get hold of a weapon at the moment. But I can talk through and maybe not too far down the future, but we can come back and recap um, and what we're doing.
So hopefully that's the first insight for the people who read about it. It's been documented. It's been misintrued. Everything about it. Um, so I'm giving you a proper insight to what we did and how we went about our training. Safety was always paramount. Don't worry about that. Um, but at the end of the day, we always did. And remember this, realistic training with live ammunition and masses of it. Perfection is what we wanted. To get that, it doesn't come straight away to everybody every day of the week. 